Hello everyone and welcome to lecture 66 of this series. This series of lectures is based on my book, Manual Fluid, Electrolyte and Acid-Based Disorders, A Pathophysiologic Approach to Common Clinical Problems. I'm Dr. Mohamed Tinawi. I'm a nephrologist in Northwest Indiana. You can find my book on Amazon at the link below. We are still on Chapter 8, Metabolic Acidosis. Today is Part 13. This is the last part. We are going to do some case studies. Case number one, we have a 72-year-old man with a known history of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and stage 5 chronic kidney disease. The patient was going to start dialysis in two weeks. He presents with sepsis of urinary tract origin. Laboratory evaluation revealed pH 7.15, bicarbonate, serum bicarbonate of 10, PaCO2 of 30, sodium 130, potassium is high, 5.6, chloride 110, if you calculate an ion gap, you get 10. You have lactic acid of 7.4. What is the acid-base disorder? Now, here, when, when we're looking, we see, okay, someone has a COPD. Uh, probably we have, uh, what, like chronic respiratory acidosis. Maybe they are retaining uh, CO2. Uh, when we, we say there is sepsis, we think especially of anion gap, high anion gap, metabolic acidosis, especially with lactic acidosis. We see here we have CKD stage 5, so we're thinking, well, maybe non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. So there could be more one thing going on. So how do we make the diagnosis? So when we look at the pH, we have a pH of 7.15, so this means acidemia. So what is the process? Is it metabolic acidosis? Is it respiratory acidosis? Is it both? You look then at the serum bicarbonate, it is low, so this confirms a diagnosis of metabolic acidosis, okay? So clearly we have metabolic acidosis. Why? Because we have low pH and we have low serum bicarbonate. Now, what is the delta anion gap? Well, it is zero because anion gap is 10, so 10 minus 10 is zero. But delta bicarbonate is 14, meaning bicarbonate dropped by 14 more than expected. So this means, like we said, we have two types of metabolic acidosis. We have non-anion gap metabolic acidosis due to chronic kidney disease stage 5, which is what you would expect, but we also have anion gap metabolic acidosis due to sepsis. Here we have lactic acidosis. Now, what is the respiratory compensation? Well, when you have a drop in bicarbonate by 10, from 24 to 10, the PaCO2 should drop to about 23. Okay, but here um, we have a PaCO2 that is 30, so it is high. Why is that? Because we have respiratory acidosis. Usually it's chronic due to COPD. So this is an example. This is a complex example of a triple acid-based disorder. But you can really see hints from the question. You have lactic acidosis that gives you an ion gap. You have CKD5 gives you non-anion gap. And I'm telling you that the patient has COPD. So you're kind of expecting a respiratory uh, acidosis. We'll go now to case number two. We have 53-year-old woman presenting with severe diarrhea. Laboratory evaluation, sodium 128, potassium is low, so sodium and potassium are low, like you would expect with diarrhea. Chloride 98, bicarbonate 19, you calculate an ion gap and you get 11. How would you manage this patient? So I really want you to start thinking, the moment I say severe diarrhea, think non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. So here you have low bicarb, an ion gap is normal, so probably this is what's going on. You're losing bicarbonate in the stool, you're losing potassium, you're losing sodium. So this really fits. So the patient has multiple electrolytes uh, abnormalities due to severe diarrhea. So we have hyponeutrina, hypokalemia, low bicarb. Usually this is consistent with non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. I wouldn't check AVGs, okay? Um, there is no need. Um, but I cannot say for sure it's, it's non-anion gap metabolic acidosis without uh, AVG. I'd say it is consistent. It's likely due to that. So first, replace potassium. You're not going to give 
bicarb because that would drive potassium into the cells and you get worsening hypokalemia and the potassium is already very low so you're going to replace potassium replace it orally and intravenously and after that you are going to start isotonic sodium bicarbonate drip so 150 mole equivalents per liter of sodium bicarbonate in d5 and uh, hypotonic solution should be avoided because the patient is already hyponatremic now we, when we are replacing volume we are going to shut off vasopressin or adh and you are replacing the sodium, you're shutting off uh, ADA secretion because the volume is replaced, so hyponatremia will be uh, corrected. So this way you are replacing the potassium. You really need to replace bicarbonate here because there's direct loss of bicarb, and you are replacing sodium and volume. Case number three, 67-year-old man with type 2 diabetes mellitus and stage 3 chronic kidney disease due to diabetic kidney disease is seen in the renal clinic for a routine visit. The patient is on lisinopril 40 milligrams a day, so full dose due to hypertension and nephrotic range proteinuria associated with his diabetic kidney disease. You do labs, you are looking at the labs, you have a sodium of 137, you have high potassium of 5.7, chloride 105, uh, bicarbonate is 21. An iron gap, you calculate it and you get 11, and creatinine is elevated, so you have a, a stage a 3 chronic kidney disease, creatinine is 1.4. How would you manage his hyperkalemia? Now, this patient is exhibiting several features of hyporenemic hypoaldosteronism. So, this patient has hyperkalemic renal tubular acidosis, and uh, when we have hyporenemic hypoaldosteronism, we have aldosterone deficiency. We call that type 4 RTA, which is by far the most common type of RTA. He's over 65, he's hyperkalemic, he's diabetic, he's hypertensive, and probably has non anion gap metabolic acidosis. Now, if we discontinue lisinopril, we are really doing this patient a disservice because he needs it to prevent progression towards end-stage renal disease. Rather than reducing the dose of lisinopril or stopping lisinopril altogether, we are going to start a potassium binder. A good option will be pterimer, 8.4 grams daily, and we are going to give some sodium bicarbonate, 650 TID for the low bicarbonate, and this way this patient and many others can continue their essential treatment with lisinopril. The same would apply if the patient had congestive heart failure, uh, basically uh, systolic CHF, I should say, chronic systolic CHF. Case number four, we have a 23-year-old man with a known history of major depressive disorder. He presents to the emergency department after a suicide attempt. The patient ingested an unknown amount of antifreeze. So when I say antifreeze, you are thinking what ethylene glycol. Laboratory evaluation reveals pH 7.21. Serum osmolar gap is really high, 35. And we have a bicarbonate that is very low, 10. And serum creatinine is 1.8. You look at the urine and you see oxalate crystals. Look at those crystals. They look like little envelopes. Now, on exam, the patient is severely uptunded. How would you manage this patient? Well, everything is really screaming dialysis. So, you are going to give intravenous fumpazole, which is an inhibitor of alcoholic alcohol dehydrogenase. Uh, you are going to start sodium bicarbonate drip. If you want to give thiamine and B6, that's fine. But you need to do emergency dialysis. So you have uptundation. You have a very high osmolar gap. You have severe metabolic acidosis. So you have, you must start uh, dialysis. Case number five, 55-year-old woman with a new diagnosis of type 2 diabetes mellitus is started on an S. SGLT2 inhibitor, canagliflozin. Like I said, we have three, canagliflozin, empagliflozin, and dapagliflozin. They're indicated for patients with uh, uh, chronic kidney disease and proteinuria. They're indicated for CHF. They help with diabetes, etc. cetera. Uh, one week later, they pres uh, the patient presents to the emergency department with nausea, fatigue, abdominal pain. Laboratory evaluation reveals normal sodium of 142, potassium 5.1, chloride 103. Bicarbonate is low 20, but here you have a clue. An ion gap is 19. It's really high. Blood glucose, well, not bad for a diabetic, 160. So you do ABGs because you're suspicious. You have uh, an ion gap of 19. 
Um, and uh, pH was 7.39, PaCO2 is 34. How would you manage uh, this patient? So this is a case I saw within uh, the past year after usage of canical flows in and SGLT2 inhibitors became uh, really common. So this patient uh, pH is in the normal range, like we said 7.39, but the bicarb is low and anion gap is 19. So this is what we call euglycemic DKA. This is what I suspected. So um, I, uh, I confirmed the diagnosis by measuring beta-hydroxybutyrate, and sure enough, it was elevated at 4. So these inhibitors of uh, the uh, uh, sodium glucose co-transporter can give you euglycemic uh, DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. So the glucose is below 200, but you have uh, a clue. What is the clue? You have high anion gap, okay? So when you have unexplained, high anion gap, metabolic acidosis in a patient on one of those medications, Cana, DAPA, or empagliflozin, suspect euglycemic diabetic ketoacidosis. Why? Because you have to stop the medicine, you have to transfer the patient to the intensive care unit, and you have to start them on the DKA protocol. This is what I did. The patient did extremely well. You can get them out of it in less than 24 hours. So when in doubt, if you have unexplained uh, unexplained anion gap metabolic acidosis, even if the glucose is a little bit high, it's below 200, check beta hydroxybutyrate. You will have your answer. Case number six, 80 year old woman with a known history of type 2 diabetes mellitus presented to the emergency room with abdominal pain. On her fourth hospital stay, she underwent laparoscopic cholecystectomy due to severe necrotic and hemorrhagic calculus cholecystitis. Renal function and electrolytes were normal, normal preoperatively. So at that point, they did not call me. When did they call me? Well, when they became abnormal. So serum bicarbonate level dropped from 25 on admission to 14 on hospital day number three. On hospital day number five, her labs were as follows. This is when I was called. Glucose 226, BUN 19, creatinine, not bad, normal, 0 0.82, calcium 8.8. .8. Sodium 138, potassium 4.1, chloride 110, uh, bicarbonate was really low 19 and a nine gap of 19. This is why the primary care physician didn't like the, the idea. Why is it the bicarb dropped so much from normal to, uh, to nine with a high anion gap? So the medications she's on included glipizide, metformin, and dapagliflozin. What is causing this low serum CO2? So for a nephrologist, you think, well, there could be a big problem here. Metformin can give you high anion gap metabolic uh, acidosis because it causes lactic acidosis, okay, type B lactic acidosis. And this is bad news. You have, you would have to start dialysis. So what do you do? You check lactic acid. Dapagliflozin, on the other hand, can give you, like we just said, a diabetic ketoacidosis uh, picture. So you are going to check beta-hydroxybutyrate. So the patient was seen uh, post-operatively and her anion gap was high. So everything was consistent with anion gap metabolic acidosis. So uh, we checked the, uh, the above test. I discontinued metformin and dapagliflozin. The patient was started on insulin on the 0.45 normal saline with 75 of bicarbonate per liter. Lactic acid came back normal. So it's not metformin. So that's good. No need for dialysis. But beta-hydroxybutyrate was elevated at 2.27. Normal is 0 0.27. That confirmed the diagnosis, again, of a nine-gap metabolic acidosis due to diabetic ketoacidosis due to canagliflozin, which is an SGLT2 inhibitor. Now, in one day, the next day, her bicarbonate was up to 21. IV fluids were stopped. Beta-hydroxybutyrate came down to uh, 0 0.57, and the following day, the patient was uh, discharged home. Um, at the time of discharge, serum bicarbonate was 26, and I gap returned to normal. It was 9, and endocrinology uh, was consulted. They are going to manage her diabetes now with just insulin, no, no more metformin or canagliflozin. And uh, this was not a case of euglycemic DKA because the serum gluco uh, glucose was elevated. Now, <clears throat> as a word of caution, oral hyperglycemic agents are not recommended for management of hospitalized patients anyway. So postoperatively, don't put someone on metformin or canagliflozin. They should only be managed with insulin. And 
insulin is the preferred agent for management of hyperglycemia in hospitalized patients. So remember that, okay? If you don't want to get into trouble, each hospital has protocols and it will give you like a low dose insulin, medium dose insulin, high dose insulin. Just go with one of those and this way you avoid such problems. Now, these are the conclusions from this long chapter on metabolic acidosis. The kidneys guard against the development of metabolic acidosis by reclaiming almost all of filtered bicarbonate in the proximal tubule. And also the kidneys do acid excretion by mainly ammonium production. Oral alkali treatment of metabolic acidosis in chronic kidney disease patients has the potential of slowing the rate of decline of renal function. The four major causes of a 9-gap metabolic acidosis are lactic acidosis type A and B, ketoacidosis, whether alcoholic, whether it's uh, diabetic ketoacidosis or starvation, renal failure, whether acute or chronic, and toxins, in particular methanol and ethylene glycol. The two major causes of non-9-gap metabolic acidosis are renal tubular acidosis, we said proximal, distal, and hyperkalemic, and GI loss of bicarb, such as diarrhea and uh, use of laxatives. The treatment of lactic acidosis is directed at the underlying cause. The use of intravenous bicarbonate remains controversial. The kidneys and the lungs maintain normal acid-base status in the body. Why did I start with the kidneys? Why didn't I say the lungs and the kidneys? Well, I'm a nephrologist, not a pulmonologist. Renal tubular acidosis is due to tubular defects resulting in failure to excrete enough oxygen or reabsorb filtered bicarbonate. This concludes metabolic acidosis. See you at the next chapter of metabolic alkalosis.